You're watching I Dream in Black and Gold on the Voluntary Virtues Network. There is an agony and an ecstasy in more deeply understanding objective moral philosophy. We understand how virtuous people can be and are, but it tears the heart that due to this system that we've inherited, that holds the historical survival panic of our ancestors, all these well-meaning people become tools of evil. So what are these misunderstandings? The cause, all this turmoil, let's figure out, let's be precise. And when these fallacies are understood and broadly accepted as evil and unjustified, what will our world look like then? The universal insights of philosophy and science gradually become the practical shapers of our world and not just flights of fancy. There is so much hope for a better world. We live in a time of wondrous possibility, a time of great risk, and a time of change. So in pursuit of truth, in pursuit of goodness and, and beauty, let's define this nightmare. And let's explore this dream. I dream in black and gold. We have more people in prison in America than Stalin had in Russia during his reign. Something is terribly wrong. The United States was supposed to be the shining beacon on the hill. It was supposed to be the place where the rights would be secured, where people would be free of tyranny. This is obviously not the case. It was designed as the smallest government possible, the most personal freedom possible, and yet it has turned into a vast empire, perpetually more and more restrictive. It was supposed to not interfere in other countries' affairs. It is the most interfering now. There was a beauty to the Constitution much more beautiful was the Declaration of Independence. But we begin to see now these documents, these agreements, these visions for what they were. Flawed, 
if not worthless. There, these agreements between people that aren't even around anymore, and they've become excuses rather than protections. They've become excuses for violations. As all these laws have become, we look at all these different agencies. They are supposed to protect us, but they continually violate our rights. They're supposed to protect the environment and they give license to business and the government itself to be the largest polluters and to be free from responsibility from tort law. All of these failures and why we reach behind, we strip away the myth. Which myth? This myth of the exemption. The government is exempt from all the rules it supposedly keeps. No stealing, taxation, don't murder, the wars, the police brutality, all these things where because you are a member of this monolithic monopoly institution based out of threats of violence and outright lies trying to bribe us into complacency and obedience. You wear that badge. You wear that uniform. You hold that office. Suddenly you're held to a different ethical standard. You are a super human being. This is the myth. This is the religion of, of statism of believing that a position, once it was kings, now it's presidents, it's no longer the person or the family, it's the position, and people vie for that position. But that position itself makes you another species of superhuman that doesn't have the same moral codes as the rest of us. We may ask, but if we didn't have bosses, if we didn't have rulers, then how would we survive? How would we get things done? What would be the practical solutions? To this problem, that problem. We need someone to tell someone what to do and to force them with with violence and guns and and fees. As opposed to being able to find creative solutions. Well, I would say, you know, if you feel that way, have a leader for yourself. Find a leader, you know, have a government. But then you have given them your right to self-governance as safekeeping. But there are so many of us who don't, who don't recognize this authority, who want to preserve our sense of self-governance, governance. So, why do we get to be ruled? If these people are just human beings, why are we subject to their opinions? Now, there is this idea that 
the government, the corporation of the government, you know, corporation, we can just call it a company. Corporation is a legal fiction created by the government to protect special interests from uh, having to make restitution if they do things that are wrong. So, you know, people who argue against the corporations, well, corporations are just another branch of the government. People like to switch that around. But the government is what is the thing that with military force and the religious uh, uh, authorization it provides from the ma vast majority of the world, um, they are the ones who grant corporations the license to do these things. Otherwise, corporations would be liable and the shareholders would be liable for all the wrongdoings of the corporation. So, and then it would be an individual problem. We would have uh, board members of companies and we'd have shareholders and these shareholders would be a lot more cautious about who they pick to run their boards. Not just about money. Well, it may still be about money, but it'd be a lot more about not doing criminal activities because you wouldn't have EPA licensure to protect you when you fuck up the environment. Excuse me. You wouldn't have uh, the bailouts. You wouldn't have any of these ways that these corporations avoid responsibility for their actions by passing it off. They socialize the costs. That's when socialism is great for those capitalists. They're not capitalists. At least they're not free marketers. They're capitalists in the sense that they might provide capital for projects, but they're not free market. They're protectionists. They're mercantilists. But perhaps that's uh, another show. So these corporations receive the protection of the state, of the office holder of the government, or the uh, board, which is basically the legislature. They argue about things and they vote on stuff. And then they impose their will on other people who may, probably a good majority of people, want to be part of it. And that's okay. But for those of us who don't want to be part of it, those of us who would like to have voluntary, peaceful solutions, or who just don't trust the the guy's in charge. We don't trust them. They haven't proven themselves that well. All the different line of politicians that we get are just one idiot or one demon after another. And if you want to believe in them, if you want them to solve your problems for you, if you trust it, go ahead. Please, have at it. But don't force me. Don't force my friends to go along with this. We should be able, sure, to have our voice, but we should also have the ability to exit. And when I say exit, I don't mean leave the country. Why does the country... Why is it owned by this government? The land mass of the United States is supposedly owned by the, the federal government and then subleased by the states and then subleased by the counties and then subleased by individuals and firms and such. And each layer puts on more regulations. Now, if I own land, do I really own it? Not according to the government. Only nominally do I own it. 
But say, you know, I my family has been on this piece of land for generations. Or even if not, even if I bought this land outright from someone who is not a criminal and there is no no one who has a better claim than me. Well, why, why does the government get to claim that it owns this land, that it has a superior claim? Well, usually, it's one of two ways. One, they drew it on a map. Never been there. Never saw that hill. But, drew it on a map. I own it. Or, our company, our corporate entity, owns it. This is a major fraud. If I just say I own half of Alaska, it's, in the words of Rothbard, pure vainglory. Now, the other way that that government claims to own things is by violently stealing the land in America. I mean, they may have made a deal with France. Why do the French own that land? Because usually, because they made an arbitrary drawing on a map. Or the Spaniards. You know, either way. Whether we buy it, we... Oh, I've got to stop doing that. The U.S. government. The... Ugh, the gangsters and and violent mob that stole the land from the original inhabitants, the American Indians, various tribes. Why would that be a, a legitimate claim? Why would that be a legitimate to claim to land? If we treated these human beings like human beings, we would say they don't have a legitimate claim to that land. If I went into your house, forced you out of your house, put you in a dog shed and f fed you crap, would I be said to have a legitimate claim to your house? This is not a civilized way to live. This is not a civilized way to run a social order. If you ask me how we're going to have social order without government, what do you mean? There are plenty of ways to resolve conflicts without a violently imposed social rule structure. When we look at romance, friendship, joining clubs, all of these things, getting a job, these human interactions in civil society, where we act like real human beings who care about our future, how we're seen in the world. We care about love and care about each... You know, we care about what other people think. We care about them being themselves. We're beautiful. But this myth has created these exceptions. Now, if, if it was legal, you know, if it was socially acceptable, because that's most of what legal really means, if it was socially acceptable for you to 
enslave someone if you were seven feet tall or taller. Oh, that's a bad example, but let's go with it anyway. So seven feet tall or taller. There would be a great market for people who wanted to get the easy life to enslave others to go and talk to the people who are seven feet tall or taller, right? Just makes sense. Hey, I don't want to work that hard. Hey, I've got a, I've got a deal I could break, but nobody really wants it. You know, this seven foot tall guy, if I made it worth his while, he could enslave some people for me and have them do his bidding and he'll do my bidding. I just, I'm the good one with a good idea, right? This is a political solution. This is regulatory capture. So because of this myth, because of this church called the government, we have politicians and we have business leaders or um, psychopaths in, who want to do military experiments or something. Um, there's all sorts of crazy crap you can find. We can get the ear of this person. We can bribe them, even though it's illegal. It still happens. It's amazing. It's a contract. They don't even write anything down. Free market at work or something? I don't know. Black market. You can't even regulate it. There are already laws there. It's like a gun-free zone. <sighs> Politicians are the seven, to, seven foot tall guy who gets to enslave people. Now, thankfully, our politicians have to keep up some semblance of respectability. Just like probably the seven foot tall person would have to make up some story as to why seven foot tall people get to enslave you. Because if they didn't, the slaves... Would, no, would not, they wouldn't stand for it. We have to perpet, they, they, huh, they have to perpetuate this religion. And so they will give you all sorts of lip service. They will tell you all the stuff that you really want. They might even give you a little bit of the scraps off their thieving table. I don't want to be part of it. I, I don't believe that they will provide solutions. I, I believe that every time we put the, the problems that we have, we put the solutions in their hands, everything gets worse because they were bought out. Sure, there's a few ones that aren't so bad. They might even be led by an ideology. Now, whether that ideology is good or not, that's open to question. But say that they have a decent ideology and they vote with principle. The vast majority have no such, uh, have no such principles. They're doing pragmatic solutions but the difficulty is that when you have a monopoly, if you're wrong, it's wrong for everyone. If we could have political solutions, legislative solutions, rural solutions, we have different cultural social norms. If we can have different institutions that provide uh, these kinds of services, then if one was drastically wrong, it wouldn't be wrong for everybody. And the people it was wrong for would have an option of exit. They could take their business elsewhere. They could find other arbitration services, other protection services, other courts to bring their claims.
As it stands, we don't have any of that. But people have been thinking about this for a long time now. Heck, the machinery of freedom is over 40 years old. It's a book about how these structures could work. We've studied ancient Ireland, which operated for almost a thousand years on this model, where there was no central government. There were various governments in the same geographic locations operating relatively peacefully, competing for the services of providing arbitration. We can have a sophisticated, modern era example of a polycentric legal order. If suddenly there wasn't a, a central government threatening to punish you for ever doing all the normal moral things that you understand. Don't steal from each other. Don't kill people. Don't use violence outside of self-defense. Be a generally good, nice person. I find that the vast majority of people are good people. And that you can see in the statistics the greatest, most destructive, most murderous thing in our world is government. The largest exterminator of human life that outside of accidents. The largest murderous thing is democide. It's the active and systematic slaughter of its own people by their governments. And I don't think it's necessary. And that doesn't even count murder. When you count murder, it's, it's just, I mean, it doesn't even count war. It's, it's simply horrible. And when you take it in comparison to the private murders you know the private uh crimes that people do it's so much less same thing with taxation it's been estimated that as much as 80 percent of our productive capacity is eaten up by the government and yes it provides services with that 80 percent but as with all monopolies it eats up way more than it gives back I believe in people, and that's why I think that we can find voluntary peaceful solutions. If you're interested in more of these ideas, please continue to watch this show. I will post links to other more detailed uh, explorations of some of these ideas, and I hope that you have a beautiful life and a beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching. I dream in black and gold on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Mm -hmm.